Some people have sold their soul to Satan. You know why? Because light speaks about not just good and knowledge. It also speaks about what? Truth. Oh. It speaks about what? Truth. So Satan can take a teaching hmm? and make it look like what? Like light. And someone who claims to be in the light will receive it like a new revelation. Oh, you are not hearing me. You are not hearing what I want you to hear. You are not hearing it. You are not, you are not hearing it. He will make it look like a new revelation. And this new revelation will promise you a Christianity that is utopian. It will offer you something that will give you the impression that, oh, I did suffer sins. So, it is not my spirit that commits fornication. It's my body. So, you know, I've gained stature in the spirit. So, I can lie on the bed like this and say, body, go and fornicate. So, body will leave my spirit on the bed. Meruvana. My body will be on Okada. Me, I'll be rolling on the bed like this. Then my body goes to fornicate. Then I come back and join my spirit. And I have so gained stature that even when my body comes back, there's no contamination. My spirit is still holy. It's my body that's contaminated. Oh my. It says if I am a child of God and then I am fornicating with a sister and then the trumpet sounds. Say, come on, don't be troubled. You have a one-way ticket to heaven. I used to imagine that thing in my head. You were fornicating. <laughs> and then the trumpet sound. I don't know how you are going to appear. Will you be arranging your trouser? I'm trying to, I'm trying to. I try to think about so my God. But they say, don't worry, it's a one-way ticket. Salvation gives you a one-way ticket. Nobody can drop you from the flight. They didn't tell you that you can drop yourself. You can decide to step out of the boat with your actions. So Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. And this is not just Paul trying to be uh, beautiful with words. Look at Jesus. Give me John 8 and verse 44. John 8 and verse 44. You are of your father who? The devil. And the desires of your father, what happened? You want to do. He was what? A murderer from the beginning and does not stand where? In the truth. Because what? So when he masquerades himself as an angel of, of light, he can't still speak truth. So if he attempts to present something as truth, what will come out is what? A lie. When he speaks a lie, he speaks for what? He speaks from his own what? Resources. For he is a what? A liar and the father of it. Hmm. When a city's walls become broken down, eh? when it becomes broken down, most of the time, Part of the reasons the world broke in the first place is that they could not discern Satan. The enemy became indiscernible. And the walls were not, pre were not prepared to keep the enemy 
out. You're not prepared. So the wall is not just for defense. Remember, in defense, what is it doing? Keeping the enemy out. The wall is for what? Preservation. So the wall sets boundaries that those who are members of the city must not cross if they want to be what? Safe. Are you here? So in the new Jerusalem, the way the, war, the Lord builds boundaries is through his commandments and his laws. In salvation and in righteousness are rules and regulations, laws, commandments. Thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do that. Bro, the minute Israel came out of Egypt, you know the first thing God told them? You shall not serve any other gods. Because as strong as compromise is in the modern day church, where people can compromise for anything, ah, a lady that is known for nudity, sings for the world, that if you are a normal believer, you can't look at her pictures or her music two times. You should be irritated. She went and wore a nun's garment. You know nuns? Catholic nuns. Sister. What we call sisters. Hmm? She wore it and then was half naked and took a seductive pose in the garment that we consider that if you see a sister, you will say she's holy. She desecrated it. Then somebody comes and says, you have desecrated the Christian faith. People in the city, oh, help me, Jesus. People in the city now got up and said, don't judge You don't know her heart. Ah. These are the people that probably it was their responsibility to discern that Satan is improving his technology. So we need to re-engineer the walls. But you see, they don't want to re-engineer the walls. The Christian in modern day likes to be vulnerable. Because he's looking for opportunity to compromise. My brother, he has idols in his heart. Because there are young men who will look at that picture eh? and lost after the lady. So they don't want her to cover. If she covers, how will they feed their lust? So they come and say, What? Don't judge. They have idols. You say the Yahoo boy, the boy in internet fraud, he's a thief. You say don't call them thieves. That even the days of ignorance, the Lord will overlook. Oh yes, he will overlook the days of ignorance. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't change the fact that he's a what? A thief. You can't spin it. You can't glorify it. He's a thief. You sit behind a computer and swindle people of their hard-earned money. Oh, God, you are a thief. And the Bible has a clear description of who a thief is. And oh, God, is your picture I see when I read it. You are a thief. Nothing will change it. You know, because within the body of Christ, we don't know the difference between contending for the faith, corrective teaching, and judging. You know, they are not the same thing, no? The Bible is clear that you should contend. It says you should be prepared. I think it's First Peter now. You should be prepared to give a defense when you are asked. Why do you have this kind of hope? Jude said that you need to be, be able to earnestly to do what? 
contend for the faith that was once delivered. There's a place for contending. When Paul appeared, he looked at Peter and said, Oga, this thing you are doing is wrong. You were eating with the Gentiles and then all of a sudden Jews from Jerusalem came and you are shying away is wrong. He didn't, he didn't do that correction in the secret. You are not here. He did that thing in public so that the Jews that came, if they too were not seeing that kind of ambition, they knew that this thing that Peter did is wrong. It's not judging when you notice that there is compromise on the faith. In dealing with the matter, you are not, you are not condemning the person. You are dealing with the item that is at hand. We don't deal with individuals. What concerns us with individuals? What we deal with is the actions that the individuals engaged in. And if you don't have people that can contend for the faith, and you don't have people that can do corrective teaching, what the Bible calls a teaching priest, you don't have those kind of functionaries in a generation, the city will be vulnerable. This is why currently in the body of Christ, you come and you say, why should a Christian be dancing on my piano? Somebody else within the city will come and say, and they want, they want people, they want people to just be singing songs where they are falling under the anointing. See, dear brother, dear sister, my concern is not the song or the rhythm. I've taught you here before that praise and worship is not worship slow song. No. Then when you say, get in the mood of praise, then everybody will spread their legs like that. No. It's not the, what do you call it now, cleric? It's not the tempo. Uh -huh, that's the right word. It's not the tempo that classifies it as praise or worship. I've taught you here before that worship is not singing. You can sing in worship, but that you are singing does not mean you are worshiping. Worship is living, is the state of your life that flows from the composture of your heart. My concern is not the tempo. My concern is the source. The source by which spirit has this rhythm entered into the body. We should be concerned. We should be concerned. There's a, there's a teaching I listened to probably 20 years ago. It's titled Exodus into Egypt. And I listened to former hip-hop musicians share how they used to get inspiration to sing. I can't remember the name of the group now. It's so long. Right? The group, I think there are four or three of them, hip-hop musicians. They said demons, I'm quoting them, used to walk into their rooms. They used to have fraternity with demons. Somebody has that kind of experience and comes with a dance like this. Is what he saw the demon doing. Oh, you don't, you are not understanding me. He, he had a trance. Hmm? And then saw the demon doing like this. Then he brings it in his music video. The next week is on our pulpit. You know what we do? We take a righteous song with lyrics, then put a demonic gyration. Then somebody says, eh, so, so, so the people that God is inspiring to sing on my piano, to sing this, we want to drive them from the church. Wait first. Ah, help me, Holy Ghost. So God did not see anybody within the city hmm, to give that inspiration. He first had to go and give it to a demon. Eh? Then when that demon had received it, that demon now models it to the church. It's an aberration. 
Nobody can bully me. It's an abomination. And if the church eh, does not wake up, we will weep like Nehemiah. And you see, just look, let's, let's use the Nigerian church as context. All the fathers from the SU movement, they are old. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. They are old. You know, we're discussing in my house. Now, why is it that the revival that began in the book of Acts, it was myself, Brother Ovier, and Pastor Ogogo, the revival that began in the book of Acts has last, lasted for years. In fact, when they came under persecution in Jerusalem, everywhere they were scattered to. The Bible says they were preaching Christ. They were preaching Christ. One person is running for his life under persecution. Maybe all he carried was a leather bag with no money inside, trekked for hours. When they get to a city, their first desire is not food or water, is do you know Jesus? Which kind of people were these for God's sake? Under intense persecution, if it is this day, the gospel would have died. They put their needs aside and they will stumble into cities tired. And the Bible says everywhere they went, they preached Jesus. Everywhere.